You're hearing the Frank Beckman Show, News Talk 760 WJR. The GOP leaders in the House have already said you can take that Senate immigration bill and uh, and burn it. In fact, you'll uh, you'll have a lot of uh, time to uh, to watch the embers because it is so thick and wasn't red anyways. So who's going to know what was burned? But while that all is going on, uh, there is a uh, congresswoman from Michigan, and you know her very well, who is trying to build support for a plan that would ensure border security, something that the Senate version of this new immigration bill would not do. And uh, when you see the uh, polls of Americans, they want border security. And that's what Congresswoman Candace Miller's focused on. She's on the other end of our line. Good morning. Good morning, Frank. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Actually, I know you want to talk about border uh, security, but I was listening. I was on the line when you were telling the Jerry Leninger story about the monkey in the the golf course out there. And I heard this from another guy that must have been over in the same golf course. And, you know, he finally just said, it's an analogy for many things in life, because sometimes you got to play the ball where the monkey throws it. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly right. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? Anyway, on the border security. Yeah, on the border security. <laughs> if the monkey throws the ball over that border fence, yeah. who, whose property is it? Well, here's the thing. The the Senate, you know, I appreciate everything the Senate is doing with uh, comprehensive immigration reform, but the House is going to approach this whole thing under uh, regular order. In other words, we are passing bills piece by piece that address uh, immigration reform, because it's a very complicated issue. It's, you know, you've got an incredible amount of consequences or unintended consequences, perhaps, that are going to be with us for a long time. And what I say, and I think uh, many of us say, and certainly the majority of Americans, I feel, uh, feel this way, is that border security first. I mean, that's it. If we don't secure our borders first, we're just going to have the same conversation in five years and ten years, you know, forever. And, and we can secure our borders uh, I think America uh, wants us to. They they just want the Congress to have the political will to do it. And and if we do so, I think then you'll get the majority of our citizens really buying into the plan about fixing our broken immigration system. So as you mentioned, I'm working on this bill. I'm the subcommittee chair on Homeland Security, and of my uh, subcommittee is Borders. And so we have a border bill that actually passed unanimously. Every Democrat and every Republican on my subcommittee, if you can believe such a thing, on Capitol Hill, voted for this. And then the same thing in the full committee on Homeland. Uh, Again, all Democrats and Republicans, for different reasons, I think. Everybody pretty much in agreement about border security, but I think many of the Democrats know that if we don't get a border security bill through the House, that the rest of it is going to be... Uh, a very heavy lift, if not impossible. The the Senate version of this gives the Homeland Security Director, in this case Janet Napolitano for now, uh, complete autonomy to determine whether we should, for instance, complete the 700-mile-plus-long border fence. If she determines it's not necessary, uh, she can simply put a stop to it. And uh, I, I think that's what's got people concerned, that the, the, the legislation may say, oh, we're going to do the fence, and then it's got this big butt in there, B-U-T, and, uh, and, and it uh, could, for whatever reasons, stop that fence from being built, which isn't really border security. It, it absolutely is not. In fact, you know, I think the Senate's approach is, is, is the same thing that we've been doing for a long time, which is just throwing more money, more resources at a problem, rather than fixing it or requiring that the problem be solved. I mean, their approach is uh, not based on any um, oversight other than Napolitano or whoever the secretary might be, or, or really some other expert input as well. And so w- we have several things in our bill. Let me just give you a couple that are huge differences between what, what we think should be done in the House and what the Senate is doing. First of all, you have to have an as- assessment of what is the current state of operational control. That's really the, the term that we use. What's the operational control of all of our borders? We require that you have a baseline assessment of that. Well, the, you know, the Department of Homeland Security does, doesn't really want to tell us what operational control is, how much of our border is under operational control, and the Senate bill doesn't require any baseline at all. Then we also say we are not going to put any money in our bill until you have a strategy, an actual plan, a strategy, uh, not only the strategy but then how you implement the plan, so not just throwing more money in an ad hoc fashion, again, without a plan. And, of course, the Senate bill 
is it delineates billions and billions and billions of dollars, although they don't, it's sort of a wish list, doesn't really tell anybody how to do it. I thought it was interesting that both, both unions from uh, Customs and Border uh, Protection and also ICE have come out and said, don't do this. And, and, and this, it, this is amazing because the bill would add 20,000 agents, we're told, and yet the unions say, no, we're, we're not in favor of it. Well, because what the unions are saying, look, you, you're not even assessing what these 20,000 additional agents are supposed to be doing, or where are they going to work, or, well, you know, what about all the infrastructure that is necessary to support them? And, you know, they've had trouble even uh, recruiting uh, as, as they have it. So it's, it's just, it's sort of more of the same. And, you know, it, it sounds good, and I'm sure it's well intended, but unfortunately we've been trying this for a number of years and uh... it it just has not worked yet and another thing that uh, we do in the house that the senate does none of is really having uh... metrics so in other words you have to de- develop some sort of accountability metrics there you can uh... run this stuff through so that you can see whether you are succeeding or whether you are fa- uh, whether you're failing really the senate doesn't have any of that and then, then the last thing that I would say that is a huge difference, again, between the House and the Senate, <clears throat> we say, you know, that, that, that Secretary Napolitano or, and, and through the Senate bill is really saying, you know, just trust me. <laughs> let, me uh, let me use my own uh, discretion here and just trust me to do this stuff. And what we are saying is we actually are going to have the implement, implementation, implementation excuse me, plan and you'd have that reviewed by the um, Governmental Accounting Office, the GAO, and then also reviewed by an independent national laboratory. There are several of them in the country, Frank, that, that do this. So you have, you know, a couple of layers of, of scrutiny, really, on these metrics. And the Senate, they basically say, well, again, you know, you've got to have some recommendation to the... Uh, uh, to the secretary, and uh, but it doesn't say what to do with it. So yeah, basically, it's whatever Big Sis says, uh, so it shall be, and that's that's the end of it. I hope you can get the pork out of there too, because they also uh, threw a bunch of pork in the in the uh, bill uh, as as they amended it. I assume you're going to uh, address that. Well, you know that's why uh, the American public hates Congress, right? They look at this stuff. I mean, they already got the as they're calling it the Alaska Purchase and the. Um, the, the uh, union kickback, construction union kickback, and the the earmark for the Tucson sector, and on and on and on with all this uh, this pork. And uh, that is why I have to say that I think the House's approach under I know a lot of people have differences, perhaps with Speaker Boehner on this. I think you would have to agree that his his approach to it is 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 spot on. He's not getting pushed into anything. He's just saying, look, the House is operating on our own time frame. We don't think it has to be done in a week or or, or whatever. We probably, you know, I don't know what the time frame will be, but the whole issue being so complicated, having a comprehensive plan like that is not the right approach. We don't think. We think instead of that, as I say, you do it sort of piece by piece, where border security, border security first, then you can address the visa overstays. Uh, you can do, uh, you know, guest worker permits for the uh, agricultural workers. Another part for uh, what we call E-Verify, which would be a, uh, a system that would allow um, uh, employees, employers, excuse me, employers, to be able to verify that those that they're uh, hiring are here either legally or with some sort of a guest worker uh, documentation. Yeah, so, all, the, all these things are possible as long as you're serious about doing it and, and not uh, and don't have some political motivation behind it. And that's that's what I. I, th- I think all Americans hope will eventually happen. Hey, listen, we've got to run. You've got to run. We appreciate the time. Thanks for being with us. Have a wonderful Independence Day celebration this week. Thanks. Happy Fourth of July to you and everybody listening. Thanks, Take Frank. Care. Congresswoman Candace Miller.